Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Excel to graph a, uh, a set of scientific data with multiple trials. I'm also going to show you how to take the average of the trials, how to get the uncertainties, how to add error bars, and a best fit line. So this is pretty much everything you need to do for a, a linear scatter plot in Excel. So let's take a look at our data. We have our first column is mass in kilograms, six variations. And we have displacement in millimeters. And we have six variations, three trials total. Well, because each of these three trials all go with displacement, I'm going to highlight these three cells. And I'm going to hit this Merge button, Merge and Center, to merge them together so X covers all three of these trials. And actually, we're going to need to find the average of these three trials. So I'm going to type in average here as a column header, average. I'm, I'm going to unmerge these tiles and just merge all four of these tiles above it together by pressing the Merge and Center button. Now to find the average, I just add up all the values in that, in that variation and divide by the number of values. Um, and I could do this manually, but Excel has a function that does this for us no matter how many trials there are. So I'm going to start by clicking this cell, and I'm going to press Equal to start the formula bar. Since I'm taking the average using the average function, I'm going to type in average. I'm going to open a parenthesis. Once my parentheses are open, I'm going to select the three trials, three data points I'm averaging, which is D5 through F5, and close my parentheses and press Enter. It gives me an average of 19. Now I could manually type that in in all six of these tiles, but uh, Excel will actually do that for me if I select this formula tile, the average of 19. Notice the formula is up here. If I grab the bottom right corner, if I click it and drag down, um, it will create formulas in all of these tiles. And for each, for each cell you move down, it increases the, 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 uh, the number by one. So it's actually just taking the average of each variation as we go down. So this way it does all of our averaging automatically. We just type in the formula once. Okay, so the other thing we need to get is the uncertainty for each variation, which is, since we're measuring x, um, our uncertainty would be written as delta x, but I don't know how to easily write delta, so I'm just going to write it as dx, lowercase dx. Now our, our uncertainty is the range of values divided by 2. So I'm actually going to write this here, range over 2. And I should include the units for my uncertainty. They are in millimeters. So my lowest value is a 14. My highest value is a 24 in variation 1, which means the range is 10. Divided by 2, I get 5. My uncertainty should be 5. I can manually do that in each variation, but I could also write a formula so Excel does it for every different variation. And so we're going to start with the formula equals, and we're going to open up a parentheses, and we're going to use the maximum function, max, open parentheses, select our three trials, and, that's a, and that chooses our, our, the greatest value uh, from our selection. In this case, it's going to choose 24. Close that parenthesis. We're going to do minus min, open parenthesis, select the values we want to find the smallest value of. Close parenthesis. So now we have max minus min. I'm going to close parentheses around that whole, uh, whole difference. And I'm going to divide that whole difference by 2 by doing slash 2. Now if I press Enter, it should give me 5. Looks like the formula is operating correctly. Now to find the rest of the uncertainties, I just click the bottom right corner and drag down. And it propagates out that formula to these other cells. We get all of these uncertainties. Now notice that Excel doesn't round correctly to sig figs. We're just not going to worry about that for Excel. We'll worry about that in our data tables. And we'll worry about that in our fi final answers. But Excel is just going to do the math as it is. So next thing we need to do is actually make a scatter plot of our data. So we're going to go to Insert at the top of the ribbon up here. Under the Charts section of the ribbon, go to the Scatter Plot, click it. We do not want dots connected, so we're going to choose just a blank scatter plot. We click that. Now it's possible 
that Excel thinks it knows what you want and it created a scatter plot. Um, either way, let's uh, we can either hit right click on our scatter plot and hit select data, or hit select data near the top here of the ribbon to edit our data. Now, if Excel added stuff, you should see legends here, and you're going to want to click remove and remove all of those legends. We're going to start from scratch. Move this out of the way. Let's add a legend. We're only going to have one. Because we only have one, I'm not even going to name it. Our x values are independent variable. That's going to be the mass. So I select my mass values. And then I click this to select them. I click this arrow to select my y values, which are my dependent variable. Dependent variable is the averages of my three trials for each variation. So these. I click down. And we have a nice linear graph. I hit OK. I hit OK. And here's our graph. I need to clean it up a little bit and add axis uh, labels and stuff. The title of my graph is going to be uh, Displacement uh, of a Spring with Masses Hanging. Displacement of a Spring with Masses Hanging. Um, and we are going to, we need to add axis titles, so this little plus button and then axis titles. And we're just going to change the titles. This is my dependent variable. It is average displacement. And I'm going to press enter and I'm also going to do the variable x over the units. The units are millimeters. And I need to do my independent variable, mass. And I'm going to write the variable down here, m in kilograms. We can add a best fit line by using this plus function. Or we can add a chart element in the top left. So plus, we're going to scroll down to trend line. Yeah, we do want a trend line, but we also want to change our trend line options. We have a linear trend line, which is good. Let's go to more options. And it pulls up more options. Um, we don't need any forecasting, but we do want to display the equation on chart so that we can get the slope if we want. So let's move that onto the chart. And we're good with our best fit line. Last thing we need to do is add error bars that show us our uncertainties. So let's hit plus, select error bars. You may notice now that, the, that there are both horizontal and vertical error bars. But we only have uncertainties in the X. So that would only be vertical uncertainties. So we're just going to select the horizontal error bars, click them, and press delete to delete them. And uh, so we have our vertical error bars, but they're all the same, and our uncertainties are not the same here. So we need to edit these error bars. So let's click the error bars and right click. Scroll down to Format Error Bars. Uh, here we can change how they look. We can remove the cap if, they, if we want. I'm going to keep the cap on. We do want our error bars to be both above and below our points. It is plus or minus is our range of error. And here are our different choices for error bars. We could have fixed value. Let's say our fixed value is 15. This is what happens. It's the same everywhere. We could have a fixed percent error, which means our error is going to get bigger the larger our x value is. That's what that would look like a little bit. Um, but we don't actually have any of that. Our error is different for every trial, or every variation. And so we need to put different errors for each variation. So we're going to go down to Custom. And we're going to hit Specify Value. Now this little box comes up where we select our error. Our positive error value, click that, and select our uncertainty. And click this. And then we're going to do the same with our negative error value. Select our uncertainties. Click this. And we press OK. And our error bars have appeared. Let's see how they look. They're pretty small. 
but they're not insignificant. What these error bars do is they show us the range of possible values, true values of the displacement at a given mass. Um, so this is a pretty good graph. It has everything we need. Um, and that is all we need to do. Hope that was helpful. Bye.